nervous. Look at this crowd. Yeah, it's wow. huge, right? Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. I just need to take a minute and take it all in. I love your socks, by the way. Oh, yeah. Like, Right. I forgot Green. to shave. <laughs> no, just but you are in the fashion industry, so that's what you guys do. Yeah. yeah. A little bit of flair. <laughs> yeah. uh, circular economy is something that you feel very warmly about, right? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And I want to know, um, what is it really? I think we all have some kind of, kind of fussy picture <laughs> about it. Okay. But if you would like, just yeah. walk us through it. That's definitely a relevant question. Um, I want to start by asking the question to the audience. So how many of you actually know what circular economy is? Uh, come on, be honest. Liars. But, that, but that's, that's, that's really good. I've been giving lectures at a School of Economics, Handels, the past four years as a guest lecturer. And I've been asking the same question every year. And I see that the amount of hands being raised are increasing, which is fantastic. Um, but there is still um, a need to inform, uh, uh, I guess. So basically, when we talk about a circular economy, a circular econo economy is based on three main pillars. The first one is to design out waste and pollution. The second one is to keep products in use for a long time, as long as possible. And the third one is to use um, and regenerate natural systems. So whenever you're done with our product, it should become part of the ecosystem that already exists. And unfortunately, for the longest time, we humans have separated ourselves from the natural ecosystem. And uh, we need to kind of find our ways back to that system because the way we are living and consuming, it's not very beneficial for the climate. I'm sure a lot of you are uh, agreeing with that one. So we have uh, a circular economy coming up a little bit, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, trying to, to push the other system out. But if we take it like from uh, the, the viewpoint of a blouse, yes. so let's say a, a blouse or a shirt or trousers in in the old economy, yeah, and uh, you compare that with trousers from from the circular economy. How would that? Um, that that's a that's a great question. So let's say <clears throat> the current economy, and this is applicable for, I would say, everything that we are producing right now. It's basically you start with an idea or a design of a product, and you sketch it. You source the materials you produce it at whatever scale that is necessary depending on the demand and then you can ship it around the world for the consumers to purchase it whether it's online or in stores and then it comes into our hands right and we can we buy it and we use it and according to different studies we normally use it maybe seven times an average and when we are done with it we actually discard the garment so basically, we take a lot of resources to create a product that we use for a really short time, and then we throw it away. And this is putting a lot of pressure on our ecosystem right now. It's uh, creating a lot of uh, pollution in the air, but it also creates this massive uh, garbage mountain some, that you all have seen. So the solution to that one, or the necessary shift that is needed, is, is to shift from this linear system to a circular system. And it's basically taking the beginning and the end and bringing those knots together. So that means that already in the design stage, you need to start looking into how you bring back that product when you're done with it. And for it to be, for, for you to be able to easily pick that product apart so it's being pushed back in a recycling system and it becomes a new product. And be before you do that, of course, it's really important to create systems and business models that enables um, consumers to use that product for as long as possible. So, for instance, when an iPhone is broken, maybe you want to fix it, or a garment is broken, maybe you need to set up solutions that you first fix the product. And, second, and then there's also other business models and Maybe you can sell it to someone else, you can lend it to someone else, or you could uh, give it away before it's ready to come in back to the system and be recycled into a new one. 
I love this. Uh, we oh, did yes. that. The beginning meets the end. Yeah. Right? It's super so, easy, right? <laughs> yeah. So that means too yeah. that um, when I buy something or, or when you design something, you need to know that these materials, let's say it's different materials in a, in a blouse or something, yeah. that they go, go together or and that they actually can be recycled and stuff like that. Exactly. So one of the biggest challenges right now, if we take the fashion industry, um, is that there are a lot of... Um, there are a lot of, uh, it, a fabric that you use is a mix of different materials. And these materials uh, are quite hard to separate from each other. So how do you keep, keep that in mind be, at the design stage for you to be able to pick that garment apart? And that's just one part of it. There are so many components. Just take a shoe, for instance. I think someone, there is around 72 different pieces that goes, components that goes into that shoe. How are you designing that shoe in a way so that you can easily pick all these different components apart so that they can be recycled? And for us as customers, if, if we want to be, uh, you know, if we want to know what the clothing comes from yeah. and if we want to be good consumers yeah. right, and buy the best stuff, we need more than just this blouse is 100% cotton, right? Yeah. So uh, we are also talking about in the circular economy about traceability, that we know where stuff come from. And the the company name uh, I lost it, but I recently did an interview with uh, a woman who worked with traceability, and she uh, it was traceability for shoes. Mm -hmm. So you could actually see where the cow yeah. uh, had been walking around. Mm -hmm. I mean, now your shoe animal had been walking around in which you know field yeah and I thought that was a little bit morbid in a way right because the cow is not now dead now on my feet right? yeah but it was uh, it brings it closer to you it becomes more but it's, it's innovation like that is that important to know where our clothing come from I would, yes absolutely so as I described for you um, one of the biggest enablers or necessities for a circular economy is actually to know what has been going into that product. So for instance, let's say um, when you're done with it and you return it to a recycling uh, place and it comes back to the recycler, one of their biggest challenges is to actually know what's in that product. I mean, because the information on the label is not always there, but also when it's there, it's not enough. So then the question is, that, so for that to become efficient and scalable and for us to be able to recycle at the scale that is needed, we need to have transparency, we need to have traceability, we need to know what's in the product down to chemical level and where it has been, where it's coming from. Yeah, absolutely. But Nina, that sounds like an amazingly big challenge, right? Everything should be transparency and traceability is it is it possible even it has to be possible <laughs> I mean the, sh the shift from I mean let's face it the shift that we are like looking into going from an ec economy setup that is that we have been optimizing for the past 200 years to shift that towards a totally different one in such a short period of time it's a huge challenge but this is the transparency part is very it's really important and there are organizations out there that are already looking into it one of them being UNC UNC facts uh, that are uh, developing a suggestion to standard to towards that exact question hey girl you you just missed to mention that you are one of those experts <laughs> yeah. Working for the oh yeah yeah yes uh, I'm, yeah. I'm one of many experts and I think they have done a great job and bringing a lot of experts to the table to actually look into this because um, so another important angle to this uh, challenge is not just for any company to start being transparent like uh, it, it needs to be standardized because all these garments will be collected from multiple different land, brands globally and it will like move around so we need to yeah. have a set, set up, same set of data that is being trans uh, transparently shared in the same way.
across it. But, and this is what you are working on with the yes. UN group. And yes. UN, I'm pretty impressed actually that UN is doing something so progressive. I mean, maybe I have a very, you know, <laughs> I think that they are not very uh, efficient sometimes. But uh, they, they also a very big organization, an old organization, like a, uh, you know, is that bureaucracy and stuff in, in the UN? Or how do you feel about working there? I, I could just talk about my, my current experience. And that is, that, that's actually a very positive one. We, um, I, was, I became part of this group sometimes last year. And the timeline is to have a first draft ready by June this year and the final version the year after. So for anyone who has been part of any type of cross-industry standard development or even a suggestion, that's quite a like short um, period of time. Yeah, it's very and I'm, and I'm very um, positively hopeful towards this result. I feel like they're doing a really good job. Can you give us a little picture in our <laughs> head about when all you experts from all over the world yeah. are meeting and sitting and somebody's no, I don't think about that. That's not a good idea. You know, that's yeah. a great idea. Or, or do you agree? I'm like, have you seen Star Wars? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but absolutely. And I think that's the beauty of it because, I mean, for, for us to tackle this shift from linear to circular one of the main points is collaboration because not a single person organization or brand or government have the power or the solution so you have to be able to collaborate and this group i think it's they have something around 200 people who are involved and we are talking about members from ngos we are talking about tech uh, uh, um, tech enablers, the blockchain experts, business experts, all kind of different brain power that comes together with the same mission. And I think, I mean, it becomes quite a um, powerful place to be part of. And of course, we don't always agree. We don't always agree. And sometimes you get annoyed and irritated. But the important thing is that it's being moved forward. But such a cool job to be part of that group, you know? I feel very privileged. Yes. So, um, last question. I want to ask you, uh, you are obviously very engaged in, in, in the subject, in circular economy. So I, I was wondering, how hopeful are you that we actually will get to the point mm -hmm. where we have a fully circular economy? That's a great question. And um, for the sake of transparency, I will say that I'm cautiously optimistic and that has to do a lot with um, the changes that I've seen just over the past five years. I mean five years ago when I was trying to shift uh, convert certain products from conventional to uh, recycle polyester I was being called um, tree hugger which tree I hugger. yes which I actually took as a compliment because <laughs> I love trees. Um, but I mean, going, going from that to having people people engaging with you, organizations setting bold goals and actually putting aside money and investing in these questions. And uh, I always mix it up with the American one, but the new Green Deal, like the EU Commission uh, uh, package in terms of like uh, addressing uh, these questions and sustainability issues, one of which is circular economy makes me actually hopeful, much more hopeful than I've been before. I love that. Big applause for that, uh -huh. right? Thank we you. have uh, a couple of minutes, <laughs> so I'm sure there are so many questions for you. Um, you've been a true uh, inspiration here for 15 minutes soon. Uh, does somebody want to ask a question? We have a microphone. Or are you busy to run to ask the Ask a hard one. one. Okay, here we go. Yeah, a hard one. I don't know if it's a hard one for you. But, um, <laughs> Uh, Hello. I work uh, with uh, writing about small companies. We're actually going to have a panel next week, and Marlin, we will be in. Yes. Oh, hi. <laughs> so, I, in my point of view, at least in Sweden, I can tell that at least I see a lot of small entrepreneurs that are making difference, that are like pushing in the right direction. We're talking about circular production, yeah. circular economy. 
not just the, I mean, I'm thinking about what you think the value will be, I mean, the power will be like more important that large companies or large organizations work towards uh, the circular economy or will we actually see more action, faster movement in Sweden through the help of small companies? And Thank you, you. That's, a that, that's a great, great question. That, that's, that's a great question and I think, I mean, to, to, to add this, the question is that challenge and everyone needs to be engaged. Everyone from big corporates to small corporates to citizens to consumers to uh, um, academia to legislators and sometimes I feel like isn't it Greta Thunberg that says that there are no small actions? So I think th those small actions might lead to innovation that a big company then take over and actually scale it up. So there are there is space for everyone, and we all need to take that responsibility. So there's no thanks, Greta. Thank you, Greta. Actually, we can yeah, we can stay a little bit longer, but we have to switch over this broadcast to the big stage. Mm -hmm. So thanks for us for everybody who's doing. No, 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 not if you sit here, sit. We can we can <laughs> continue a little bit if you don't want to go to the big stage. Okay. But everybody wants to go to the big stage. Am I yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, she has one more okay. question. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, my question would be, it's really great to think about the production also. And there are, at the same time in the circular economy, uh, something which falls between the chairs, and that's the logistics. Mm -hmm. So who is going to address uh, the question of sustainable shopping of a fashion, not buying 15 and returning 14, and uh, you know, producing a huge footprint on logistics? Can, can, you, can you repeat that last part? I didn't really hear that. Um, so who's responsible for, for the logistic yeah. part of it? Yeah. I mean, I, my answer again would be that this this is a common challenge. Sometimes for sometimes for now, logistics is not my part of expertise, but sometimes you need innovation, and when you have that innovation, then to invest in those innovations to actually bring it back into organization and accelerate it and scale it up. And that's that that's a huge responsibility that both investors and companies need to take. And I yeah, I, I would say that's my answer. I wish I had a better answer, but logistics is not my part of expertise. But Thanks. we I'm, I'm, I would love to talk, discuss this more. Thank you so much, Nina. Now I, the audience left because I was pulling out the time, but whatever. This is nice. Yeah, you know, we are a nice. group now. So I thank you so help. much, Nina. Yeah, thank a little you. applause. Thank you. thank you for me. <laughs> And we're back. Welcome to the main stage of RuPaul. No, of um, 
of Women in Tech. How was uh, your breakout sessions? Let's bring out those uh, Slido's and uh, I have some questions for you. Go into Slido. I want to know, how was your breakout session? 